Morning everyone, how's everyone doing? So welcome back to the channel. If you're already a subscriber, thank you very much. If you're not, make sure you do that. Get that out of the way, bosh, done. So we're obviously on this rewire, this renovation job. So what I'm gonna do, because time is so, so sensitive for us, what we're gonna do is gonna get the board mounted up here, get all the cables all dressed in, ready to go, um, leave the tails. Nothing's gonna be actually connected to the house because as you'll see later on in the video, of what stage we're at in this house with the rewire so we're all at first fixed stage but we are literally so up against it with time wise that we need to make sure that we get as much done as we possibly can that is what we're doing so let's get, take you through the job and explain how we're going to go about doing this right so we've brought all the cables down for the complete rewire back to this point um, so obviously the original board is as you can see just just down here not a great location for it um, because of the garage and stuff like that so if you've got the garage door up and you won't be able to get the lid back down and obviously with these the lid lifts up it's a right old pain so we're going to change the location to obviously just behind me now so that being said we're going to put a bit of 100 mil um i think it's 100 by 50 mil trunking down from the ceiling we're going to mount the board sort of so our shortest cable is is that one there so we're going to mount the board at that sort of height there. So it's an easy work, workable height. Um, make sure that's all sorted. It's high enough away. Eventually, there's going to be a double socket underneath. Lighting circuit in here, which I've still yet to do. Uh, but the board we're using is a 14-way fuse box board with SPD, what we're going to be whacking on. So we're going to fit two um, timbers on the wall, which are here. Um, we're going to fit those on said board on the wall here mount the board to it, run all the cables in the trunk in and go in via a rear entry. That is what we're doing. Okay, so we're marked up on the wall where we want the brackets to be. So we're gonna put a level line across. I've also marked on the wall where the centers of the fixings are, the fixing points in the consumer unit. So we'll be marking those up. So using a marksman, so it'll help if we use the level on there. And then we'll, we'll drill them out and get them stuck on the wall. Okay, so fixed on the wall, nice and tight. Um, so what we'll do now, get the board mounted up, get it all sorted. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna knock out the back here and then we'll get some uh, edging strip round. Get that mounted up, but I think what I might do is get the um, trunk in all, all put in first, I think. So let's get that all sorted. So boards on, I've put some banding strap inside um, of the trunk in just to help the cold, hold the cables back and also uh, to help prevent in a case of a fire because um, there's banding strap throughout and stuff like that. Um, I've also shortened them all up as you've probably seen. Um, so because obviously before there's some that are like way down there and some that are shorter, obviously doing it this way. So gonna fit the tails after uh, and there's a reason for that and the reason is for that is because the tails that I've got I thought they were long enough and they're not so Lou bless him he's off in the van now to go and get the other ones um, although I don't need them necessarily today because obviously I'm not going to be energizing it anyway um, but so now I'm going to get on with getting all the RCBOs whacked in so they're all going to be put in now um, and we're going to do it in this way so we've got the living room ring, the kitchen, dining room ring, and the upstairs ring. 
We've got a oven and a hob. We've got an immersion heater, upstairs lights, downstairs lights, and also we're going to be putting a garage, uh, two garage circuits on here as well. So we've got garage lights and we've got a socket below. So yeah, so get in there, like I say, a bit of trunking on there, it will nice and sorted, get it all run over to the other end, socket mounted underneath, and that's all he wants for now. Right, so the board is all dressed in, okay? So we've got all our RCBOs in, all the cables dressed in. So what I've then done is I've chucked another cable down the bottom, which I'm now gonna mount up a double socket as the customer has, request, re customer has requested. That's the one. Um, gonna get that underneath there because he doesn't really know what else he wants in here because he's doing so much to the rest of the house so he says just put me a double socket underneath and that'll do so that is what we are up to so what I've done is I've just got my tails in my tails are literally just zip tied roughly over there because I'm still got the temporary board in place at the minute and obviously that's going to stay in place until the rest of the build is all second fixed and ready to go I've done it this way um, trying to keep it as neat as possible so I've got no more messing around to do. So I've got one more six amp RCBO, which is for this garage lights, which I'm gonna do in a little bit. Um, but yeah, so we'll just get this, um, we'll get this socket mounted up. Right, there's a little top tip for you. So what I tend to do is use the patrices that are of the softer plastic rather than like almost like the Baker-like materials, especially when you're doing brick onto brickwork like this, because if your bricks are not completely level, what tends to happen as you're tightening up, they will smash. So you'll end up getting a lot more breakages than what you would do is if you were using these, they're a bit softer plastic basically. That's the, that's the gist of them. Um, don't ask me why. They just are. So another little tip is, well, it doesn't have to do this. I mean, this is just being fussy. So with the screw heads, what I normally do is either, I do them all horizontally, um, but it's, it's kind of a little bit of a good practice to get them either into horizontal or vertically. It does two things. One, it just keeps consistency throughout. Um, I know it's a little bit fussy. I know in the, I'm gonna get slated in the comments, but for me, as also, I know that if somebody else has come back and faffed about with it, you know, because if it's homeowner, DIYer, they won't do that. They will, they will not do that. Um, so it's just something that's just a nice little tip for you. All done. Just had a meeting with the client, just gone through everything, make sure he's happy with everything anyway. So we've got our, got four spare ways in here. So I know the client's just said to me that eventually he's on about putting potentially a garden room further down that way. So that's fine, EV charger, all those sorts of things. Um, so I'm just waiting to hear back about some underfloor heating. So we're putting underfloor heating throughout this whole house as well. So I'm just waiting back for confirmation on um, sizes, whether we need to put another um, 32 amp radial in for that. Um, so yeah, so it's all sorted. We've labeled up as much as we can do. Um, so on there, so we've labeled everything up. So we all know what's, what's what. So 
So it's all good to go. We haven't got to mess about then later on going, right, okay, what's what? What we got to test? What's the labeling? We've got to get on with all that. And it's just a faff. Another little top tip for you, okay? So for all these board covers and stuff that all hang down, because like this one, sometimes you can get lucky and you can push down and they stay up, but this time it's not. So if you have one of these, which is a stud buddy, you can whack that on the side and it'll hold your lid up for you. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you've gotten to um, subscribe, make sure you do. Link is in the corner. And if not, I shall see you on the next one.